Good to go. Hi everybody, I am Jen Cothers. I am from New York State. I am, I, I would be Brian Cothers, her significant other. Um, and I teach in the same district in upstate New York. Um, I teach eighth grade, she teaches um, high school anatomy. And what we're gonna talk to you guys today about is how to bring in 3D objects, whether from the internet or student created into post spaces, okay? So <clears throat> the first thing, everybody's familiar with post spaces, yes? Amazing, okay, awesome. So if you see, we do have a bit.ly for you. If you just want to take a picture of that, you can access this presentation at any point in time. Feel free to share with everybody. We love to share everything. So feel free to share. So we'll stay on that just for a second for you if you need it. But it's bit.ly, Postbases 18. And what we'd like to show you today is we'd like to show you how to work with 3D objects in Postbases. It's not something that a lot of people are really used to doing. We're used to working with so many flat images all the time. And sometimes it gets kind of boring for the students because they really don't get the feel for how things actually really are three-dimensional. Only with science teachers, we talk about animal and plant cells, and the kids don't understand when they look at it under the microscope, well, why can't I focus on that one part? I don't understand. And I'm like, well, it's three-dimensional, so the nucleus might be hiding that stuff down below. Or if you're a chemistry teacher and you're trying to teach them about anatomic or the, the models of their molecules, they just don't understand that the bonds aren't totally flat. Things are really three-dimensional. So it helps them with that aspect of it in science. But it really, truly is nice for them to have an understanding of 3D objects in any world. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to show you how to use these. We're going to show you how to use these objects in co-spaces. Now the one awesome thing about co-spaces, if you want to head to co-spaces directly, the one awesome thing about co-spaces that we truly love is there's an amazing library of 3D objects right in co-spaces. And if you use the library of 3D objects in co-spaces, they have native animations to them. So if you drag in one of the people, you can actually have that person cheering, jumping up and down, you can put them in different positions and have them kneeling. You can do all sorts of different things with them. If you have a dog, you can have the dog walking or running or a horse or something like that. So using the objects at Coast Spaces is actually so easy. Now you guys are very fortunate that they just did an update on Sunday and the library has actually changed. It's now categorized so that you can find things more easily and it's also searchable. So that was one thing that was a huge request from the community that they really pulled through on us. And you can now search for things within the library to make it a little faster and easier to find your objects. It's as simple as dragging and dropping the object onto the space. Once your object is into the space, you can see Brian's doing a couple of things with it. This button right here, as you drag up and down and hold the button, will make it larger or smaller and change the scale. Pretty intuitive, not too hard. If you click and hold the other button with the up and down arrows, you can actually bring it up and down into your Put space. Down, into the air. <laughs> you didn't do the pig, what happened? You totally screwed fine, up. Fine. So you can move it up into space. So if you're placing birds or butterflies or you wanna group objects into different areas in your space, you can move them up and down very easily. Now the other thing that you can see Brian is doing is he's clicking on that blue ring in order to rotate it to different directions. Thank you. Can you get back to that pig now though so that we can see the ability to move it? Yeah, can you just kind of bring that down? I want to get the rest of that menu. So just bring it down a little for me. There we go. If you click on this other ring right here, you can see that you can rotate this pig in any direction you want. So you can tilt him upwards or downwards and any dimension. It's quite easy, very quick to do. You can see the angles. This also comes into play later if you start to work with coding. Now, how many of you guys have kids that are working with coding? A little bit. Okay, so I will admit and I'll profess that I'm not a professional coder. I've learned coding because of post spaces. I'll tell you that that's where my coding experience has come from. I'm not, I'm not a coder. I'm a science person, but not a coder. I can code, anybody can code. So the nice thing is, is if you double click on an object, you'll come up with an additional menu, it's our editing menu. The very top 
tag, second down, gives you the name of the object, which is important for the code later. You can edit, yeah, you can edit the name of the object. So Ryan, of course, is going to call it our flying pig. Unfortunately, it has no wings. The other thing you'll want to do is you'll want to toggle that little button so that you can use it in the code block later on. So if you switch it to the right, that object will then be able to be used in block code. And for ease of use as you're doing your coding, if you've placed a lot of objects into your scene, sometimes it's helpful to show the name. So I don't have to try to remember what it is. Maybe when you get done with your coding later, if you want, you can turn that off too. So once we get that set up, you can see this next button down, second from there, with the little balls that look like they're moving, shows you all of the built-in animations for the objects that are native to the library and code spaces. And we were playing with this the other day, and the rolling is pretty amusing with the pig. But when you look at the animations for the characters, the characters can cheer, they can jump up and down, and all sorts of things. Now, if we set the animation from this menu, it's going to be constantly animated in the scene. And I don't want that to happen. I just leave it off. And I'm actually going to set that in the code later on. Okay? So really, that's like the very basics of working with the objects from the library. But some of you might be thinking, like, well, what if there isn't something in the library? What if I need it? This would be fantastic for getting interested in coding and getting that introduction to coding yes. that they think they're everything's too more. Yes. I know I love it because I'm not a coder. But if you have the EDU version and if you want faces and you're not working in the free version, if you do have more advanced kids, they don't just have to use the block code or the code spaces code blocks, they can code in JavaScript as well. So please don't ask me to do that though because I don't know how to do JavaScript coding. But they can code in JavaScript too, which is amazing. Um, but the basics, you could get them down second, third grade using code blocks or block code. But like, let's say I, I want to do objects from somewhere else. Do, does anybody have their kids working in 3D modeling? Any 3D creation software? Chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tinkercad. So, do you want to do that part? And I'll, I'll drop. So if. If you have some of this stuff coded, you know, created STL, if you're doing Tinkercad, Autodesk, Inventor, AutoCAD, um, you can you can export STL or OBJ files, right? Or let's say you don't have, they're not creating or designing, you can go to Google Poly, and in Google Poly, you can search for any and all 3D objects that they have in their library. So let's say. Let, Poly is kind of a repository, a collection, a curation of all of the images that Google has found. 3D, 360, all of them are created, curated in Poly now. So now you can go to Poly and you can do a quick search. We're, we want to put a backpack in our environment. So now we search a backpack and we have a whole host of different backpacks that we can select from. So Jen, if you want to just click on that first one for me. You click on that first one and it, and it comes up and there's an option down at the lower right hand corner that says download. Download that object. And when you download that object, click OBJ file. It'll be STL or OBJ. And you'll download that object. And once you download it, it'll be a zip file. So extract that zip file. And now all you have to do this is the this is probably the easiest thing to do. The hardest was to download it. The easiest part is you take all of the files in that folder, highlight them, and drag them into your CoSpaces environment and drop them. Watch what happens. It's magic. Are you ready? CoSpaces magic. Watch out. I got it. I got it. Guess what? We have a backpack with color, with texture, in our space. Done. Now, can you animate this? Can you move this? Can you do everything? Yes. The one thing it won't do is if you, if you pull in like an animal or a car or something, it won't walk as nicely and animated as the ones in co-spaces, but you can still code it, move it, do whatever you want with it. 
and it's right there. How do you do this with student-generated objects? Student-generated objects, it's going to be an STL or OBJ file, right? Literally drag and drop the object right into the space. And now, so let's say you have the kids designing, I know in my school we have kids designing cars and rockets and stuff, in, in Tinkercad or Autodesk, right? They literally now can drag and drop that object into co-spaces and now they can make that rocket launch. They can make that car move. Yes. <laughs> yes. So if you want, we can animate the backpack. We can make it do something. And again, Jen and I are not coders by any stretch of the imagination. But it has all of the same features. You can code it. You can move it. You can make it spin, do flips, everything. So for me and my kids, I sit there and I look at this and I go, wait a minute, they're designing all of this stuff in their classes. Now we just made it come to life in a real environment. So now they want to go visit, they want to visit their rocket launch or watch their rocket launch. You can put this, they bring it up, their environment up on their phone, put it in a viewer and now they're there. They're at the launch of their designed rocket. Um, this, I believe that this is in the free version. It's just drag and drop. You're just adding stuff to the to your environment. Not on mobile. Not on mobile. Yes, I forgot that. Thank you. Yeah, I was looking on your Yeah. Yeah. So that's literally, guys. Uh, my kids and, and I know some of Jen's students. They literally their creations come to life now, virtually, but it still comes to life. It makes it real for them. What you coded? What you coded to do, Jen? Oh yeah, that's our World Cup. That's our World Cup one. Missing World Cup. What, why'd, you, why'd you get rid of my flying pig? I like the flying pig. There you go. The backpack just went up. On click. That's So if you have your objects, if you have your objects that you've uploaded from Google Poly or you've uploaded from Tinkercad or anything like that, the coding is the same as all of the other objects. You can set them to move forward, move up, push, and things like that. It's all the same. The only thing that you're not going to get are those preset animations that Coast faces have with their native objects. So you're not gonna be able to make it sheer or anything like that. But you still can get these objects to come in now with color. This was a recent addition to the program. It used to be that the objects that came in were gray. Now they can come in with their colors and their textures. So the one thing that we really like about it is, is this can be very authentic for your students. This is a way for them to showcase what they create even in other pieces of software like Tinkercad or anything like that. And now they can bring them into an interactive virtual environment so that they can share with others, they can explain their model, whatever it might be, they can work on animation. This is something that can be used cross-platform. It doesn't matter if you're working on a desktop or a tablet or a Chromebook. All of the functions and features for this still work. You don't have to have the goggles. You can see that we can view it right on Brian's computer here without the goggles. So in some cases, some schools say, well, we don't have the money for the devices. It doesn't matter. You can still view it and be interactive with the environment, even without the devices for the goggles and everything else. And in some cases, some kids, their eyes get too tired too quickly. Or if you're working with young students, sometimes it's too hard for them to navigate it. Sometimes working on that computer screen is actually a little bit easier for them to manage. Or if you're working on iPads, it's easier for them to manage the iPads. So that's one thing that we really truly love about Postbases is its flexibility in terms of working with different devices. We also love that ability to bring in objects from other places, now with the color and texture, um, animations to be able to move them around. Um, do we have any science people here with physics? Oh, okay, so one feature that we will show you is, if you notice that that soccer ball bounced, 
when you look at the animations, if Brian goes back to the basics of it, when you double click on one of your objects, one of the options right here with this crazy bouncing ball is to allow for physics features. And please apologize, I'm not a physics person, even though I'm science, not awesome with it. But what you can do is you can set collisions you can give an object mass so that I had the person when it ran towards the soccer ball, when it collided with the soccer ball, it allowed the ball with the, with the code to be pushed. And depending on the mass of the ball, it obviously it's gonna fly farther than you know, if it was a, a lighter ball, heavier ball, whatever it might be. So it's pretty cool because you can allow those physics collisions to take place. So now you can take your cars you can set your cars to collide. You can give them different masses and see what would happen if they were both moving forward. You can change the speed at which things are moving. The possibilities are actually quite endless. So if you are a physics person, the physics features are really pretty cool to play with. Um, the one other thing that I would like to add though is the gallery has expanded tremendously in co-spaces and there's an ability now to share you're going to share to the gallery if you're one, you know, one person publishing your post space. You'll always get a link to share. So your kids can share their post spaces creations with other people and they can view their space anywhere. Like you can view it on the web, you can view it in the app. So now you can have your students creating. You can share that link in any, you know, any program that you use. If you have the kids share in something like Padlet or in Classroom, now they can view each other's spaces they can view each other's creations, and now you really have more of a community. What do you think about that? Any questions? Anything we can... It's like a simulation. It's like a bet. It's a simulation. But they're creating them, not just putting numbers in. And that's what I love about it, too, because they really get to deal with the trial and error of everything and see, well, if I give this something, you know, a five kilogram mouse, and that has a 10 kilogram mouse, and they come at each other with the same velocity, what's gonna happen? Now, I mean, is the science perfect? You'd have to ask uh, Eugene and some of the other programmers on that one, but it, it at least gives them that ability to see what happens and play with it, and really just kind of get an appreciation for all of it. So, I have a comment for you. Sure. So instead of polling, Google polling, we use 3D warehouse, Yes. Yeah. 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 You can show them. Yep. That's a lot. Yes. 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 You, you can get your objects from anywhere. It doesn't matter yeah, where they come from. Sketch. And you sketch up to convert to a yeah. particular format. Yeah. Just be careful with SketchUp. You have to make sure that it's STL or OPG. Just export it as STL. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Other questions? I heard you earlier saying you can use this to maybe model a story or a setting. So you mentioned a lot about science. Virtual, story, virtual storytelling, yeah. Unfortunately, we are going to be science because we're both science teachers. Oh. So, <laughs> but yes, you can have virtual storytelling. So you can have students create this virtual environment and, and animate and retell the story. Um, I know, I know in, for social studies as well, you can go in and you can, you can create museum walks, gallery walks. You can reenact. You can recreate the historical events in totally student-created. So the virtual storytelling, they can literally, instead of acting it in class, they can recreate it here and customize it for their own project. So this one is on the life of Pi. So there's virtual storytelling. And notice we, pu we pulled up speech bubbles and you can put sound in here and again I'm gonna reiterate as always this is all student created student coded it's completely driven by them which is really from a teaching perspective they're immersing us as teachers in their learning which is amazing amazing any questions guys you're very welcome very welcome. Glad you guys stopped by. <laughs>